Would you like to learn how to protect your architecture from a DDoS attack? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years experience and a specialty in cloud architecture, network architecture, and security architecture. And today we're gonna to talk about a cloud and security architecture concept, and even enterprise architecture concept, how to protect our organizations from distributed denial of service attacks, otherwise known as DDoS attacks. So we're gonna talk about how to protect about against DDoS attacks in this video. But before we do, I wanna describe what is a DDoS attack. Now. A DDoS attack is a type of attack where a person or an organization tries to take another system down by overwhelming that system and its capacity. For example, let's say we have this web server here where it says web application. It's a server running this web application. Let's say the server's capacity is 5,000 requests per second. Now that means that if the attacker were to launch 10,000 requests per second, this web application would be basically overwhelmed by the 10,000 requests coming from the attacker and the attacker systems because it could only handle 5,000 web requests in the first place. Now, if this attack was coming from just an attacker and their system, and the attacker had a big, powerful computer bigger than the web application, this would be called the denial of service attack. We, the attacker using their one system would be attacking the application. Now, what makes it a distributed denial of service attack is we typically have this hacker over here. And this hacker uses their server to compromise multiple computers on the internet to get all of them working in a fleet to then launch an attack on that application, say that web server or the group of web servers. So now if this web server can really only handle 5,000 requests, and this server is looking for 20,000 requests per second, and this one wants 20,000 requests per second, and this one wants 20,000 requests per second, and the server's capacity is only 5,000, well, that's not going to work. So that's gonna be the basis of a DDoS attack. So how do we prevent against these types of attacks? Now, like anything else in security, and any security architect, cloud architect, enterprise architect is gonna know the answer is it's gonna depend, but there are gonna be certain principles and things that we can do in nearly every environment to truly prevent a DDoS attack. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna show you the various architectural components for your cloud architecture or your security architecture. And I'm gonna to explain to you how each one of these will protect against a DDoS attack. So in this environment, I brought in a typical DDoS protection architecture. And I'm gonna show what we're doing at each state. Now, the content delivery network that you see here where I have this CDN at the edge, this is going to be one of the most critical components of our environment. And the reason is content delivery networks are going to help with two things. One is when we talk about, uh, about DDoS attacks. Remember I talked about overwhelming the capacity of the server. So if we're getting a lot of requests for the same thing from a certain environment, the CDN will answer. And for example, it, it, for an answer, because it will have cached content. So we CDNs themselves reduce the load on the servers dramatically. So if we have an increased load on the servers and the CDN is caching some of that information, that can actually help reduce load on the servers, which can enable their servers to scale better when attacked with a DDoS attack. But that's not the main reason and the main ways content delivery networks protect. The main reason content delivery networks protect is they offer some form of a DDoS protection service. For example, AWS has Shield. Cloudflare has their own. And how effective are these content delivery networks at blocking DDoS attacks? Well, I can tell you that last year, uh, Cloudflare, for example, one of the larger content delivery networks that's out there, blocked almost 5,000 DDoS attacks per hour on their system. So we can stop a lot right on the CDN. And what is it that the CDNs do so well? They're gonna look at this incoming traffic. And if this incoming traffic doesn't look legitimate, the traffic will hit the CDN from the hackers and the CDN will just drop it. So the traffic will never even make it to, to our internal environment. So that's why we're going to use the CDN, the content delivery network. It can, generally speaking, help dramatically by offloading 
all that heavy, all those heavy duty requests from the network and the servers because they're never going to hit our environment in the first place. So that's one of the best things we're going to do. Now, the next thing that's going to be part of our architecture is we're going to need, typically speaking, next generation firewalls. And either for high availability purposes or load sharing, we're typically going to put a load, valor, load balancer in front of our firewalls. Now, why do we want these firewalls and specifically next generation firewalls? Well, the firewalls will block any kind of illegitimate traffic coming in in the first place. And next generation firewalls typically have some AI capabilities along with intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. And these uh, firewalls will block many of the attacks before they even get near our servers being able to affect our servers. So the CDN hopefully blocks it. And then hopefully we block it on our next generation firewalls. Now, Anytime we're dealing with firewalls, you know, every firewall does certain things better than the others. Now, next generation firewalls protect the organization from harm very well. But web application firewalls typically do a very good job at protecting against web specific threats like a cross-site scripting attack or an SQL injection, especially if the application wasn't designed properly to block these types of things. So, what we can do here is we can add a web application firewall. And by doing so, we can provide another level of protection for the web servers. Now, something I did want to mention, and we can do this both on the WAF systems, and we can also do this on the next generation firewalls. And we're also going to do this with packet filters like access control list. We want to reduce the attack surfaces or the people that can even see our systems. So let's say we don't do business in Cindy the cat country. Then we shouldn't even be accepting traffic from Cindy to the cat country anyway. So we may be able to block that on the CDN. We can also block it on our firewalls. We can also block it in DNS. We can also block it on other environments too. But the sooner we block it before it hits our traffic, the better our servers will scale. So another thing we want to do now, we're going to use a load balancer to increase performance and availability by removing single points of failure for our web servers, for example. Now on the load balancer itself, we typically can limit what kind of traffic can go to that load balancer. Maybe we've got an access list or a firewall rule or a security group or something based upon the environment. And we're going to protect that load balancer. And we're also going to protect the endpoints or the virtual machines. We're not going to just stick a Linux machine or a Windows server up there as is. We're going to harden them by removing services, unnecessary packages, closing unnecessary ports, host-based firewalls, host-based IPS systems, host-based anti-malware kind of things. So now we're going to further reduce the vulnerabilities in the systems. Now, one of the coolest things we can do in the cloud environment, which we can't do in other environments, is auto scaling. Now, why would you talk about auto scaling in a DDoS attack? So let's say these servers right now, we've got three of them. They can handle a total of 15,000 requests. Let's say we've got a DDoS attack and we blocked what we could but well, we still have 50,000 requests going open, but we can only handle 15,000. Well, if we don't want our systems to go down and they're on auto scaling, we can just launch additional capacity to continue to stay up during the DDoS attack. Now we'll pay for this auto scaling, but we won't be taken down. Business will still be coming in. So these are the types of things we can do against DDoS to protect against DDoS. Now we also want a full wide security protection. We wanna make sure that we've got a good strong IAM system, that we're collecting logs and we've got seam systems and source systems in place and everything we would normally do for enterprise security. But what we talked about in this video, realistically speaking, is how to protect against uh, DDoS attacks. And that really involves uh, using content delivery networks, using next generation firewalls, using WAF systems, uh, using any kind of packet filtering you can to further protecting yourself, hardening your systems, uh, leveraging auto scaling, and making sure you've got enough capacity to withstand these types of attacks. If you've enjoyed this video and want to become a cloud architect, security architect, AI architect, for example, or enterprise architect, we have training programs for you and we have completely free webinars where we'll go over the architecture role. We'll talk about what we do. We'll talk about the skills you need for these architecture careers. And then we'll answer any questions you want. 
live and free on Zoom because we really want to help you build your best cloud architect, security architect, AI architect, enterprise architect, or any other architect career you like. In the description of this video, in addition to the free webinar, you'll find uh, free resources to assist you in your architecture career, like eBooks on how to become a cloud architect or how to become an AI architect or how to become an enterprise architect or guides on how to win the interview when they're all free. So please check it out. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. And each week we have videos on security architecture, cloud architecture, AI architecture, enterprise architecture, and other forms of architecture. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You gave it a like, you've subscribed, and we will see you on a new video. So this is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you on another video or free webinar very soon. Take care.